Hello, good morning. Uh, this is Achan Toto. Um, welcome to Logos College Online Learning. Uh, this, is, this subject is writing two. So if you want to grab your textbook, and here's your textbook, your writing two textbook. And if you want to follow along, go to page 106. 106. Uh, but before I begin, Oops, hold on. Here we go. All right. Before I begin, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, Logos College uh, Google Classroom. There's some new things that we're doing this year that is different from last year. So you come here. You guys are year two students. So yeah, let's say you go to DEM 4.1. And you click, and here's your classroom stream right here. And you go to classwork. Right. You notice that there's topics. Right. And I put in an assignment that says student information. So that'd be nice if everybody could click on that and then go on to the assignment. And all it asks is. <clears throat> your name, your last name, your email address, and your logos, I'm sorry, your Google Classroom username. Um, this is helpful for all the teachers so that if, if your name, your Google Classroom name is different from your attendance name, your attendance sheet name, that it's, uh, they can <clears throat> identify the student and then give you credit for doing your homework. Uh, something else we're doing this year is the, what is this? Nope, hold on. Is uh, attendance policy. Okay, so if you come to right here, it says writing two with uh, Chantoto. You click on it, and you come down here, and there's new attendance policy. So this is for you to, when you come to class tomorrow, and usually you come to class, in the morning it's 8.40, and in the evening it's 5.40, right? In the morning, you come to, you get on to Google Classroom just like you were coming to school. And the first thing you need to do is click on this assignment right here. It says, Online Classroom Attendance. Right? And what this is, is you have it's a question so you will come to this question here and it's scheduled for five minutes before the class usually starts so you come to the question and then you answer I am here or do my homework on time right? to be on time to be you have 10 minutes so if class starts at 840 you have until 850 to click this and you get four marks. Right. If you're late, after 10 minutes, you get two marks. Right. After 30 minutes, you are absent. Right. That's zero marks. So online learning is going to go for five weeks before your final exam. So that means there's 20 total marks for your, for your um, attendance. So please come to class. Check in, make sure you check into your attendance every day that you come to class. Right. Um, if you have any questions, send me a WhatsApp or an email and I'll, I'll answer you. Okay. Another thing I did was I uploaded the slideshow that I'm going to use to show you. And that's available to you. And all you, <clears throat> you click on the slideshow and it pops up, the Google slide will open up like this. All right. So today, we're going to start on unit four, and that's on page 106. Right. So this, this video is going to be a pretty long video, and sometimes it will be broken up into two different videos. Other times, it will just be one long video. Feel free to pause whenever you want to. Um, if you're watching the video and afterwards, 
uh, you still don't know how to do your homework or you don't understand something, you can send me a message or a Google Meet. And to do that, Google Meet, you go to your email homepage, your Gmail homepage, and you come down here and it says Meet. And you say New Meeting. If you click on the New Meeting, you'll see something like this. You can send me an invite right here to my email address. Hold on. It's, what is it doing? You can send me an invite, right? and you can invite me, and what I'll do is I'll get this code, it's a link, and then I'll join your meeting. Or sometimes I'll, I'll post a Google Meet, in, <clears throat> and I'll post it onto the Google Classroom stream. And I'll copy this joining info right here, and I'll post this onto the stream for you. And then you could click on the password, click on the link, or <clears throat> copy and paste the password to join the meeting. All right, All right let's go back to <clears throat> our lesson today. So it's writing to unit four. Let's go to page 106, and it says describing with space order. So this unit is, when, when you say space order, it, it just talks about how you're going to describe this, the pictures, things, things in a picture. <clears throat> so for example, so this is a, a picture of a classroom, right? And there's things in the classroom, I'm sure you know, there's a clock up here, there's a whiteboard, <clears throat> there's a, a cabinet, a desk, Tables, chairs, there's a window on the left side, right, there's a curtain next to the window. So when you use space order, it just means you're describing a picture, describing where, where things are. Let's move on to this one. So here, let me do this. There we go. So here, this is, this is a kitchen. And we can use space order to describe this kitchen, things in the kitchen, where they are, where they're located. <clears throat> we could say here in the middle is the oven. All right, and this is the burner, the cooker on top of the oven. You could say to the right of the oven is a cutting board. You could say on top of the cutting board are lemons. <laughs> Next to the cutting board, you could say there's a coffee maker. Above, above the coffee maker, there are cups, bowls, plates. You could say to the right, on the right-hand side, there's a sink. Next to the sink is a strainer with asparagus in it. Over here, you could say to the left of the oven is a toaster. Next to the toaster is a cup, spoons. So there's, there's many, many different possibilities that, that many different descriptions you can use when, uh, when you're describing a picture. So chapter four, this is on page 106, and it says describing with space order. In this unit, we're going to do some pre-writing, learn another pre-writing technique. Uh, last unit, you did listing. Now we're also going to do some more organizing. And we're going to develop very specific descriptions of, of pictures by adding specific details. Right? And in order to do that, we have to use adjectives and prepositions. Right, so prepositions, if you remember, are words like in, on, below, above near, far, right, behind. So these words, <clears throat> I'm sure you've learned them before. Prepositions, they, they show the relationship between two nouns or pronouns or ideas, things. For example, this pink, 
cupcake down here is in between two yellow cupcakes. Right. So your two nouns are the pink cupcake and two yellow cupcakes. And the word between is a preposition because it shows the relationship between, it shows the relationship of the pink cupcake to the yellow cupcakes. Okay, uh, I'll get back into prepositions some more. Let's go to page 107 in your book. And this is introduction. So this chapter, you will learn how to organize information in a, in a descriptive paragraph using space order. And this will help you. <clears throat> You'll also learn using adjectives. Adjectives are words, if you remember, are, are descriptive words. And they describe nouns. And they help you add detail to your writing. So details, details help, help the reader have a better understanding, have a, give, gives, gives the reader a mental picture of what you're talking about. Right? And details, description words, <clears throat> can describe about how something looks, feels, tastes, sounds. And your paragraph says, to write a good description, you need to become a sharp observer and notice many small details. A good way to start is to think about the place, object, or person you want to describe. Right? And then you make a list of all the words and phrases that come into your mind. So listing is a brainstorming activity. Remember um, learning about brainstorming and free writing? It's where you write down whatever comes to your mind, right? There's no right, there's no wrong. It's just whatever comes to your mind. But in this unit, because we're doing space order, we want to use prepositions. Because prepositions uh, show the, uh, the location, the relationship, and the location of nouns to another noun. Words like on, in, under, on top of. So if you go to your first practice, we're going to look at some adjectives that you may know that you might not know. And part A says, ask you, is the meaning of each adjective positive or negative? So positive means it's something that's good. Negative could be, of course, it's something that's bad or something that you can improve on. Look at the first category of adjectives. Adjectives that describe a person, describe people. You could say someone's athletic. That means they're good at sports. Right? They're boring. <laughs> That's probably a, a negative thing, unless you like boring people. There's a, if someone's careful, that's positive. If you're disorganized, that's, that's generally negative. You're hardworking, that's, that's always positive. If you're lazy, that's generally negative. Sometimes it's okay to be lazy. Like on a Sunday, when I want to relax, sometimes I'm lazy. So lazy is not always negative. There's a time to relax, you can be lazy. But when it's time to work, you want to be hard working. A neat, right? neat, that's, pro that's usually positive. And the opposite of neat is, is messy. And messy is, just means, it could mean many things. It could mean the way uh, the, the person looks. They look messy. Maybe their clothes look messy or their hair looks messy. Or it could talk about their behavior where they, they, don't, like to, they don't like to have a clean house or a clean room. Next, adjectives that describe a place, right? Locations. Could be a house, an office, a school, or your bedroom, your bathroom. So clean, that's, that's positive, right? And the opposite of clean could be a few of these words. It could be cluttered, it could be messy. So cluttered and messy, they, they are synonyms, right? And synonyms, they're words that mean about the same, that words that have almost the same meaning. So if something is cluttered, it's, it's just not clean. Same thing as messy. Right? It's disorganized, unorganized. Place as dark, that's usually negative. Small, I mean, if you like small spaces, that's positive. If you don't, it's negative. Opposite of small could be spacious. 
So spacious is when there's a lot of room, like a big, big room, and there's a lot of area to walk around. Sunny, there's a lot of sunshine, a lot of light, right? Sunny would be the opposite of dark. And then tidy, tidy means neat. Tidy means very clean and neat and very organized. So let's say, look at, let's look at this picture right here. Give me one second. So here, this picture, what adjectives will we describe? What would we use to describe this picture? So this is some guy's office, and I, I would say that this is pretty uh, messy, right? Or you could say this is disorganized, or you could even say cluttered. There's a lot of things just all over his desk. There's paper, and look at his trash can. Look at his desk. There's coffee here, and pens are everywhere, and his files aren't organized. All right, so this, this, I would say, is a cluttered, disorganized office. Right here. And I would also say this is small. This is a very small office. Here, this is a nice, spacious, clean, tidy office. Right, things are where they're supposed to be. The files are in the file folder or the file cabinet right here. His desk is clean. There's a lot of area to walk around. Right, so this is a spacious, clean, neat, tidy, clean office right here. So this is, this is disorganized. All right? This could also be cluttered or messy. And <laughs> his his, uh, his his folders are, are packed with paper, and we have no idea what, what each section of his, his uh, folders are for. So you, you don't want to be like this. Right? It's, it's, you don't know where, where certain things are. And if you're looking for information, you're looking for a piece of uh, paper or document, it could take you a while to find it. Right? So you don't want your desk to look like this. So here, on, on this side, on the left side, you could say this is uh, messy, disorganized. Right? The, and on the right side, here, this is the opposite of that. Right? This is clean, this is uh, organized, this is tidy. There is no trash on the desktop. Right? There's no, uh, I don't know what this is. This is probably like uh, napkins or towels. There's none of that. All right, so you want to be like this. Your desk should look like this on the right and not like this on the left. Let's go to page 108 in your book. And on page 108, it says um, section C, and it shows you a picture. And there's some nouns. Let me put on that. Present. So there's some words here. I'm sure you know most of these. A noun is a thing, right? Thing. Uh, bed. This is the bed, of course. The bookshelves up here. Bookshelves. I'm sorry. It's up here. Uh, the comforter. If you don't know what a comforter is, this is a bed right here. And the comforter is this, is this big blanket on top of the bed right here. So this is a comforter. You have a cork board, and in this picture, the cork board is right here, right above the pillows. So the cork board is something like this, and you look down bottom left here, a cork board is where you, this is called a push pin, and you push this to put things on your cork board. Here you can put pictures, note cards, letters, whatever you want to put. Notes to remind yourself to do things, right? uh, pictures of your friends. So a lot of students have cork boards in, in their bedroom. Curtain, this is your curtain right here over your window. Lamp, this is your lamp. Laptop, I'm sure you know what that is. Pillows, his bed has two pillows. Speakers, and then whiteboard. Right? And the whiteboard is over here. Over here on top of the speakers, above the speakers, I'm sorry, by the laptop over here. 
Some of these prepositions, it says there's in front of. Here, you could say the laptop is in front of the whiteboard. Come over here, next to. There's many things that you can say with this preposition next to. Uh, the, the speakers are next to the lamp. The uh, uh, speakers are next to the laptop. Uh, what else can you say? The chair is next to the bed. The window, I'm sorry, the bed is next to the window. On the left, on the right, so this is when you describe a, a location. Uh, on the left and on the right, there are main examples of space order prepositional phrases. So on the left, you could say, in this bedroom, on the left, there is, I'm sorry, there are, speakers, and a laptop, a desk, and a whiteboard, and a soccer ball. Right? And then you can say on the right of the bedroom, there is a window, there is a bed, there is a curtain. To the left of, to the right of, this is when you, you would have to add in another noun, two nouns, you'd say, to the left of the lamp, there, is, I'm sorry, there are speakers. Right? Or you could say, to the right of the desk or the table, to the right of the table, there is a bed. Right? Under, it means beneath, under. So you could say the soccer ball is under the desk or the table. Uh, let's move on. So this picture, you could say that the lamp is to the right of the book. You could say this picture is above the bed. Say on the left side of the bedroom, there, there are windows. Here, this is your cork board. You could say on, on the left, there are photos. Uh, in the middle, in the middle, there are note cards. All right, let's go down to that exercise down there. And they, they want you to kind of, it says, the kind of person who lives here. Why what type of person do you think lives in that bed or in that house? All right? Whose bedroom is that? And one of, the, one of the first words, adjectives that comes to mind is messy right? because is his bedroom is not very neat. And then it says, your general impression of the room. That just means, well, what are some of the words that comes to mind? What, what words, what do you think of when, when, you, see, when you see this room? Right? You, could see, you could say words like uh, cluttered, messy, right? maybe, <clears throat> maybe sunny. Because it has a big window right here, and there's a lot of sun coming in, a lot of light coming in. And you can say small. It looks like a small room. So when you add details down here, you could, you could write in your own details if you'd like. <clears throat> it's just whatever comes to your mind. So there's a bed next to the window. There's a comforter, pillows on unmade bed. Uh, you could say t lamp on <clears throat> on table, soccer ball underneath the table, a laptop in between two speakers, books on the bookshelf, cork board below the bookshelf. So there's many, many things you can use to add details. Um, I'll let you do that with your own time if you'd like. Uh, let's move on to the next picture, page 109. So in this picture, it says uh, this is an instructor's office, right? like a professor or a teacher's office. And again, there's nouns that I'm sure you know what these are. And then there's more prepositions. And these prepositions, they show the relationship between these, the nouns, between two nouns, right? So let's look at some of these nouns, like armchair here. You can see in this photo, he has two armchairs and a bookcase. Let's use a preposition. You could say on the left. You say on the left 
is a bookcase. Uh, cabinet, these are cabinets down here. You could say uh, under, under the bookcase are cabinets down here. There's a desk, of course, a desk chair is behind the desk. A desk pad, there's a diploma, he has two diplomas on the wall. You could say the two diplomas are on the right of the portrait. A figurine, figurines are right over here. There's a figurine, I'll, I'll show you some more pictures later. There's a lamp on the table, on the desk. A nameplate is right here on the desk. A pen set, there's photos. Uh, I really don't know where the photos are. <laughs> picture, there's a picture right here on this table. A portrait, there's a portrait and there's a rug, right? A rug is underneath, it's under the chairs, armchairs, the desk, and everything. It's just on the floor. If you don't know what a, a desk pad is, this is a desk pad. So let's say this is your desk, and here's your mouse, your pen, here's your keyboard. So this brown thing right here underneath, all of that, that's your desk pad. This is a nameplate, has your name on it. One day when you're the uh, CEO of a business, your own boss, you might wanna put your name on a nameplate and put that on your desk. Uh, this is a figurine right here. And it could be, a figurine usually ha it has a human face, so it could be a, a cartoon, right? But these are called figurines. This is a pen set. I'm sure you've seen this before. Pen set like this. This is a pen set. This is a, a fancy, a nice pen set that you can see on top of a, a, on like a nice desk, a nice big desk. All you do is just put your pens on top of it. That's it. This is a pen set. A portrait. So portraits are a little bit different from photos. A portrait is, is, is painted. Somebody paints a portrait of you. Or, or other people, right? it's, it's painted. Where a photo, you can use a camera to take a photo. So, that, so that's the difference between a portrait and, and a photo. Okay, so this exercise down here, again, is the same thing as when we describe the bedroom. And it says the kind of person who works here. And we can tell from that picture that this person looks very organized, right? He's a very neat person. It's probably a very hard-working person. It has a very nice office. And your general impression of the room, when you look at the picture of this room, it looks kind of dark. It doesn't look like there's sunlight coming through because his lamp's on. Right? But it, lo it looks spacious. There's a lot of room to walk. And it's very tidy. Right? All the books are in the bookshelf. Things are look clean. The, pen are in the pen's in the pen set. So if you want to add more details, to this picture, please feel free to do so. Uh, the prepositions up here says against. Against is, is where something's leaning, touching something. Right. You could say, uh, what's against something? Mm -hmm. You could say the bookcase is against the wall. Uh, behind is where something is behind something. Uh, here are the chairs behind the desk. Right? You could say the portrait is behind the chair. Uh, opposite of behind is in front of. The armchairs are in front of the desk. Next to, we've already done next to. We've done on the left, on the right, and we also did under already. Okay. <clears throat> if you go to page 110, I want to move on to descriptive paragraphs. And so when, when, you, when you write, you want to write a good description of, of what you're talking about, or I'm sorry, what you're writing about, because it, it will help the reader get a very good, very good picture, a mental picture of, of what you want to tell them. So if you go to page 110, on this page it says there are, there are two keys to writing a good description. 
first way is to use space order to organize your ideas. And the second way is to using supporting sentences with specific detail to help your reader visualize what you are describing. First, let's take a look at a uh, space order. So space order is where you just want to describe where, where certain things are in, in the room, in space. It says, imagine that you are standing in the doorway of your classroom. How would you describe the room to someone who has never seen it? In what order would you describe the things you see? You can do clockwise or front to back. There's other ways to do space water. There's top to bottom, bottom to top, far to near, near to far, right? outside to inside, left to right, inside to outside. So there's many ways that you can just describe a photo or a room using space order <coughs> descriptions. Uh, let's look at clockwise. Clockwise is like, if you look at a clock, like 12 o'clock is on top, right? And let's say, look at this right here. So this is a picture of a, uh, a tiny house. <laughs> so if, if you look at a face of a clock, 12 o'clock would be up here. This would be 12, right? Then over here is 3 o'clock. Down here is 6. Over here is 9. Right? So clockwise, you go this way from 12 to 3 to 6 to 9. So if you were to describe this tiny house with clockwise, you would say up here at the top is the bedroom. There's a bed, right? And on the right, there are, there's a staircase. And beneath the staircase, below or under the staircase, there's storage space. And you say at the bottom, right, there's the kitchen. This is the kitchen. And on the left, there is a coffee maker, and there's a shelf with bowls and plates. And there, in the middle, there's a sink. So that was clockwise, because we started this, we started up here, and then we went around the room like it was a clock. The other way they say is front to back. Um, you could, let's do, down here, let's go to far to near. So far to near, Far it would be the furthest thing in this picture from you is, is the window over here. All right. So you could say the farthest away, there's a window and there's a sofa. This is their living room. Right. Say above the living room is their bedroom. So now you're over here. Now you get closer, far to near, right? Far to near. So now as you get closer, you could say here in the middle, this looks like this looks like a bathroom. I don't know. Over here, there's a staircase. Now you get closest to you, and closest, the nearest, is, is their kitchen. Right? The closest thing you could see here is down here. This is their burner. So there's many ways that you can use to describe a, a picture, and there's no wrong way. It's, it's up to you. It says writers often use space words to describe a place. But you can also describe objects or, or, or even people with, with space order. Right? Your, <clears throat> your example on page 111, your writing model, is, is, is going to talk about a room. Right? We'll get to that in a little bit. Here we go. So you want to describe a lecture hall at a community college. A lecture hall is just a big, big classroom. There's usually, you know, many, many, many students in a lecture hall at a college. And the writer, they want you to read this and notice how the writer carefully moves his focus from one location to another around the room. And there's some questions they want you to answer after you read the, the writing model. Right, does the topic sentence create a positive or negative impression of the lecture hall? Which space order does the writer use to describe the lecture hall? Right. Does he use clockwise, front to back, back to front, or top to bottom? And the last question, the writer describes three main ideas of the lecture hall. What are they? All right. So let's take a look. This is the lecture hall right here. Okay. 
Um, take some time to read this, the new lecture hall. Read this and answer the uh, three questions about the model. Okay, so now that you've had some time to read it, uh, let's look at your questions. So question one on page 111 says, does, does a topic sentence create a positive or negative impression of the lecture hall? First of all, what, what is the topic sentence? The topic sentence says, is our community college's beautiful new lecture hall is spacious, modern, and comfortable. So the topic is lecture hall, and the controlling idea here is, it says it's spacious, modern, and comfortable. So answer number one is that the topic sentence creates a positive impression of the lecture hall. And your evidence is because it says it's spacious, modern, and comfortable. And those are generally positive adjectives. Question two, which space order does the writer use to describe the lecture hall? Do they use clockwise, front to back, back to front, or top to bottom? Okay. Here, I would say that the writer uses front to back. If you look at phrases like this, on the front wall, there is a large white screen. And then he describes what's to the left of the screen, and next, he goes at the front of the lecture hall. So now he goes from the front wall to now the lecture hall area. There's an instructor's desk. <clears throat> and then he describes things that are around the desk. Right? And after that, he goes in the main part of the lecture hall. So now he's moved from the wall, from the, from the front wall, right, to the front part of the lecture hall, now to the main area where there are seats, 30 rows of seats for students. So I would say here that the writer uses front to back space order. Question three says the writer describes three main areas of, of the lecture hall. What are they? First area is the front wall. It says on the front wall. Then he describes what's on the front wall, what's to the left of it, what's near it. The next area he describes is the front of the lecture hall. Here he talks about there's a desk, right, and he talks about what's there. There's an overhead projector. There's a computer. Right? There's a lectern. A lectern is, is where it's like a podium. is where you stand, where the professor stands to teach. And then the last part, the last area that he talks about, it says the main part of the lecture hall. Right? And here he talks about there's a desk, there's for students to sit, and there's seats, and there's tabletops. Right? So the three main areas are the front wall, the front of the lecture hall, and finally the main part of the lecture hall. Okay, uh, let's move on to page 112. And page 112, it says prepositions of place. So when, when you write a description of a place, you'll often use words and phrases starting with prepositions to describe where things are. All right. In the back of the room is a large white cabinet. There's a clock above the cabinet. So your two prepositions here are in and above. In the black cabinet, in, I'm sorry, in the back of the room, that's, that's a prepositional phrase. I think it has a preposition and all the descriptive words around it. And then above the cabinet, that is your prepositional phrase. Preposition is above. So as you may already know the meaning of many prepositions, but a challenge that all learners face is how to use them accurately. The biggest, the biggest thing a lot of people get confused with is in, on, and at. It's also common for learners to have trouble knowing whether to use in front of or at the front of. Okay, let's take a look at some prepositions. So preposition is a word or phrase that describes a relationship between this object and another word or group of words in a sentence. It often gives information such as direction, time, 
in place. Right? There's, I think there's about 100 something prepositions in English language. I know you've, you've seen all of these words. And of course, you don't have to know every single preposition. But the common ones you should know after, about, around, before, uh, inside, near, of, by, but, onto, to, since. So these are words that you have all studied and know. Um, if you want a quick review, this picture has a, your prepositions of place, right? The, the bo basketball, the balls in the box, on the box, under, next to, between, among, right? in front of, behind, above, below, near, far from. Look at uh, under and below. Right? Under, you could say, here you say the ball is, is under the box or below the box. They're very similar. <clears throat> Notice below, there's a little bit more space in between the box and the ball and under. Okay. Same thing as on and above. Right? So on is actually touching it. And above, there's, there's space right here where the ball is not touching the box. Down here, far from the box, there's a lot of distance from the box and the ball. Uh, let's look at at. All right, so at, at is when you, you describe location. Right? You ask questions like, where are you at? Right? And the ball is at the door. <laughs> you can say at the front, at the back, at the center, at the top, at the bottom. Right? Like the ball is at the bottom. But we, we don't say at the middle. We have to say in the middle. So be careful with that prepositional phrase. Uh, with, another thing a lot of people talk about is house versus home. If someone says, where are you at? You could say, uh, you say, I'm at home, if you are at home. You don't say, I'm at house. Or you could say, I'm at my house, that's fine. But the, difference, the main difference between house and home that house is a specific thing, right? It's a specific thing that, that you, you can touch. Where home, it could be an, an idea. It could be a thing or an idea. And, and there's a lot of, lot, lot of similarities. So if you want to read this to get some more detail about the difference between house and home, you can. Okay, let's go to exercise A, practice two in your book. And this is on page 112. And this, they want you to find a couple things here. They want you to go back to that reading, the writing model on page 111, and find where it talks about the objects. And it says large white screen. So if you go back to your reading, Large white screen. Here we go. Here it is, large white screen. They want you to circle the large white screen. Right. <clears throat> uh, if I could find a circle. Eh. Large white screen is right here. Oh, actually. There we go. There you go. Okay, so there's your large white screen. And then next, what they want you to do is underline the phrase that describes where it is. So where, where is the large white screen? And it says it's on the front wall. There you go. So the large white screen is on the front wall. And then the next part of the exercise, <clears throat> it wants you to complete the phrase on the second column. And it answered, number one, they answered it for you. And the preposition is on the front wall. So let's look at number two. They would like you to find huge whiteboard. All right, where is the huge whiteboard? Oops, there we go. Instructors can use for projecting the, 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 oh, huge whiteboard. There it is. There's a huge whiteboard. 
They want you to circle this huge whiteboard. And then they want to underline the phrase that describes where it is. And where is the huge whiteboard? It is behind the screen. Okay. And they want you to finish that phrase. So you would type in, or you, the preposition you use is behind. So I'm going to complete this exercise, and then I will show you the answers. So if you want to take some time to complete this exercise, Okay, so you had some time to finish finding the nouns and then underlining the prepositional phrase. And your answer, here are your answers. Here's a large white screen, huge whiteboard. Behind the screen, the clock to the left of the screen. Light switches is underneath the clock. Armchairs are against the wall. Instructor's desk is at the front of the lecture hall. Uh, the lectern is to the right of the desk, 30 rows of seats is in front of the teacher's desk, small folding tabletop is to the left of each seat, and then your three feet of space is between the rows. And then if you want to complete this here, you just simply have to add in the prepositions that you underlined. Right. So uh, number two was behind the screen, number three, is to the left of the, of the screen. Number four, it's underneath the light switches. Uh, armchairs, <clears throat> the wall, armchairs are against the wall. And then your instructor's desk is at the front of uh, the lectern is to the right of the desk. The 30 rows of seats is in front of the teacher's desk. The small folding tabletop, that's on the left, oops, I'm sorry, on the left of each seat. And finally, the rows, where are they? Where's three feet of space? They are be, be, uh, between the rows. So there you are. All, right. uh, all these are your prepositions here. And then behind the screen, these are your prepositional phrases. Okay, okay. so that was a lot today. Um, I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to assign homework. And it's going to be about, it's going to be about prepositions. And your homework is going to be a Google form. And it's going to be simply uh, a multiple choice. And it's going to be about uh, finding prepositions in a sentence. Right? And it's going to be on Google form. And I'll, I'll assign this Google form uh, in, in a little bit. So uh, make sure you do your homework. I'm going to give you about five days to finish the Google form. So if, if today's Tuesday, you have until Saturday to finish the Google form. Okay, okay. Uh, that's it for today. I uh, hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, remember, send me a, a, a WhatsApp, or you can schedule a Google Meet with me, invite me into Google Meet, and I can help you. If you have any problems with your Google form, I can also help you um, how to set it up and how to answer the questions and how to submit the Google form, okay? Okay, um, that's it for now. Um, I'm gonna also upload this onto our YouTube channel. If you wanna look at that in our YouTube channel, please subscribe. Uh, if you haven't liked the Facebook page yet, I know uh, there's we, we're under lockdown right now and we don't know when we'll come back to in-classroom. All right, so um, if you want the latest updates about Logos College, just go to our Facebook page. Okay, uh, that's it for today. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.